Hello everyone and welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung. I'm going to show you how I study with GNS3 and VMware and a couple of the tricks I've learned in these last uh, three or four years that I've been studying for CCIE and labbing and doing all this teaching and Router God stuff. And it's, um, it's actually quite a bit. So let's get into it. I use VMware Workstation 9 point uh, whatever to run VMware or to run GNS3 inside of Linux Mint 13. And then the first thing you have to realize with VMware is that it really wants an SSD. When you're thinking about VMware, the next word you should really think about is SSD and uh, RAM. So max out your computer as much RAM as you can get. These days it's about 16 gigs or 32 gigs depending on how many slots your motherboard has. My particular computer right here is a desktop Core i7 overclocked, all that good stuff. And I popped into it. 32 gigs of RAM. It's running on an SSD. You can see right here, I've got the workstation up and running. You can see here that this image is, this virtual machine is saved on my E drive, which is a 512 gig SSD. Now, when you're running VMware, what you probably want to do, I highly recommend it, is you're probably going to be running some type of antivirus on your host machine. So right here, I have AVG, free antivirus, it works pretty good. Now the default behavior of an antivirus is to scan all your files and folders. Uh, it's also gonna scan everything in your VMware virtual machine folder. You probably don't wanna do that because uh, you know, it's gonna slow things down. So what we're gonna do here is open up AVG. You're gonna go to the advanced options here. The way you do that is you go to options up here and then you're going to go to advanced settings. So options and advanced settings. You're gonna get a window that looks like this. And what you wanna do is go down here to the exceptions selection, select that. And you can see I've already done it. You're gonna add an exception. You're gonna fill in the folder where your VMware image is. And actually we'll just do that for the heck of it. So you're gonna select folder. You're going to find the folder where all your virtual machines are. You're going to keep all of those clicked and then you're going to click OK. And what's going to, what that's going to do is it's going to tell AVG to basically ignore everything in this folder. So throw all your virtual machines into there and uh, you'll be quite happy. We'll close up AVG. Now talking about VMware itself, uh, I'm assuming that uh, you figured out how to install Linux and GNS3 inside of VMware. Shouldn't be a problem. So how much memory should you give it? Well, here you can see I give it 4.9 gigs. Usually for 90% of my studies, not a big deal. That works just fine. If you're doing any of the troubleshooting labs, you probably want to bump that up to 8, 9 gigs, you know, somewhere in that neighborhood. Processors leave at 1, that's just fine. Hard drive 10, that's good. Uh, all these other things like uh, floppy, I leave that uh, unchecked. We don't need a floppy in here. USB controller, we don't need any of those. Sound card, don't need any of those. Printer, don't need that. Uh, display, it's up to you whether you want to accelerate 3D graphics or not. Uh, there's not much going on inside of GNS3 that requires 3D graphics, so some most of the time I leave that unchecked. Let's go over here to options. Usually I leave most of this stuff alone. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, usually not too much going on here. If you want to have other people VNC into your virtual machine, you could put a port in there if you want. And then cancel out of there. As I power on my virtual machine, I'll show you the directory structure that I like to use for all of my studies. Uh, I keep the same directory structure across my laptops and my desktops. That way, just things are a lot easier. Things uh, kind of make sense no matter what machine I'm on. Okay, the virtual machine has booted up. Now you can see that it came up pretty fast, uh, but there's another trick I'm gonna show you in about 30 seconds that will make all of this come up even faster. Okay, so this particular distribution and setup I have, everything loads up to a blank screen. To start up GNS3, I go to my file manager and I pop GNS3 inside of my home folder and then I made a GNS3 folder inside of there. As I click into that folder, you can see I have a projects folder out here. Click on that. And here you can see I've made folders for the different vendors and the different labs that I do. So I have a folder for a CCNA, a folder for CCNP. Those are for the routergods.com meetups that I do. 
got some from Frame Relay. Yeah, Mini INE, I made that a long time ago. I don't use that really anymore. Uh, the Relativity Drive is the main one that I use for all of my INE studies. Let's click in there. So you can see I've got uh, set up for Workbook 1 and Workbook 2 that maps out to INE's stuff. And Workbook 1, you can see I have it broken out into sections. Just This is all downloadable, by the way, so you don't have to remake this. Uh, heaven forbid. And so what happens here is these are the particular .NET files. When you open them inside of GNS3, they're going to pull the configs from all of these different directories, and then you're up and running. As far as Workbook 2, you can see these are all the labs, lab 1 through 20. You open up these .NET files, and it will also pull in the config. So, and just to head off any particular questions or potential questions, uh, no, I will not give you the workbooks. You have to buy them, and as you should. They spend a lot of time and money into making those workbooks, so don't, uh, don't leech off of them. All right, for you Narbic fans out there, I know there's a lot of you, click on the Narbic folder, or I click on the Narbic folder. I have this broken out into the workbooks as well, Foundation, Volume 1, Volume 2, Advanced Route Switch, Volume 1, Volume 2, in the advanced boot camp, uh, looks like I just have this uh, volume 2 right there. And just to show you, if I click in volume 1, I have this broken out into the different labs. I click in there, and then everything's set up for that particular lab. And then in my Dropbox, what I do is I have a, uh, actually not Dropbox, I have it in my SkyDrive. Let me just open that. Okay, so this is my SkyDrive. Very, very useful thing to have stuff on the cloud, whether it be SkyDrive or Dropbox or SugarSync, or there's probably 20 different things out there, but I, I like SkyDrive. And so what I do here is I put my Visio documents and PDFs. So what happens here is I've got my VMware running on one screen, and then I have a secondary screen with the PDF of the workbook and a PDF of the diagram. So what I mean by that is, let's say I'm practicing advanced routing and switching, that particular workbook. I've got PDFs of all the different labs uh, so far that I've done in that particular workbook. And if I click on that PDF right there, you can see I have a diagram. So this would be going on my second screen. So what I like to do is kind of do things like I'll split it up into one half of my screen is this diagram, and then the other half of the screen will be the workbook. It just kind of depends. Uh, you, what you could also do is you could split it uh, horizontally so that it kind of looks like this. And so the top half of your screen has the diagram and the bottom half has the workbook. So there's different ways you could do it, uh, but whenever you're practicing, really you should you should be using two screens. It, it helps quite a bit. Okay, so as I promised you, um, this is pretty easy. Actually, let's just go through a quick run through. Click on GNS3. Everything opens up. Then what I do is go to open. And if I'm going to practice with Narbic stuff, I find the particular .NET. So if I want to do NAT page 230, click on there. And then I click on the play symbol to fire up all my routers. This doesn't take too long. I actually have my routers on a delay one second per, per router. I could change that to zero, but I just keep it at one second. After everything fires up, I simply go and click on the console button right there. Console comes up. You can see all the wonderful tabs. I just double click. Copy input to all. That way, when I hit enter, enter goes to all of my tabs. Go back to edit, deselect all, and go to none. That way, that way my uh, keystrokes aren't broadcasted everywhere. And we're up and running on router one. In a second, router one's kind of lagging a bit. Sometimes the reason why this sticks is all these, uh, you have four routers here, switch one, two, three, and four. They're actually routers with the switch model module uh, built into it. And uh, the reason it sticks is because all 16 ports have to come up. And you can imagine all of these devices are going through their startup. 
Okay, so router one, let's see if we have our IP addresses in there. So IP addresses are in there. My config is ready for me to practice with that particular page in the workbook. So it's very, very effective in terms of studying. And then when I'm done, what I do is I simply go click on the stop button right there, close that out, and then shut down my virtual machine. So it's very nice. Now there is one thing that I do that speeds this up even further. Inside a VMware Workstation, inside this particular virtual machine, I have a snapshot that opens up straight to GNS3. So let's see here. If I click on that, click yes, it's going to pop up straight to where GNS3 is open and I can go from here. So that was basically, I don't know how long it took, maybe five seconds or whatever. But uh, if I just want to practice real quick, bam, I'm right here, go file open and redo all the steps that I showed you about a minute ago. So that's kind of my setup with GNS3. I know other people have lots of other setups, but uh, basically it's all about making your life as easy as possible and getting to your studies as fast as possible. You need to get your, your lab up and running really, really quick, preferably in less than a minute, because what's going to happen is the longer it takes you to get your lab up, up and running, the more problems you run into that you're just going to make excuses for yourself. And that's especially true for those of you guys who are studying for CCIE. If you're studying for CCIE, you know it's hard enough. So cut out, cut out all the crap. Make sure you can load up everything in, in seconds and continue with your studying. Good luck and thanks for watching.